Hey, Skiba News Nation family, thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. You can also help support this channel by getting yourself some Skiba News Nation merch. Also, we are proud to announce that we are now on Patreon, where you will get bonus content, shoutouts, and much more. Thank you again for watching and helping us stay on the quest for truth. Huge shout out to all our Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for your support. We couldn't do this show without you. If you want to help support us, go to patreon.com forward slash Skiba News Nation. We are also proud to announce that Skiba News Nation podcast is now available on podcast platforms. I don't care what it costs. I want to know what the truth is. And I hope that people, my son, anybody, if my name comes up, whether you like me, whether you agree with me or not, at least you can respect the fact that he's on a quest for truth. He's on a quest for truth. Welcome to Skiba News Nation. Bringing you unfiltered views, news, interviews, discussions, and more. And now, here's your host, Jeremiah Skiba, award-winning musician and son of Rob Skiba. Hey, Skiba News Nation family, welcome to Skiba News Nation, episode 23. I'm your host, Jeremiah Skiba, and today we're going to be talking about Trump is officially running for president in 2024. Did the U.S. plot to assassinate Julian Assange? Russian missiles hitting Polish land sparked fears of World War III. Pfizer and Moderna to investigate myocarditis. Banking giants and New York Fed starts 12-week digital dollar pilot. An all-new Opus Corner, and for history, we're going to be talking about Dan Schneider, he's known as the Nickelodeon Predator, and a hilarious George Carlin clip, when SNL used to be funny, memes, and much more, so stay tuned. Now, without further ado, let me introduce my co-host, Jake Grant. Welcome, Jake. How are you? Doing great, Jeremiah. Uh, it's got a great episode today for everybody, and... I know uh, this week we have our Skiba News Nation premiere over at the Take on the World channel for their digital conference. I think that's happening Saturday, right? Yep. Sure So, is. yeah, you guys go and check that out. I know uh, we'll be airing some of uh, Rob's final presentation uh, that uh, Jeremiah and Sheila did and a couple of little promos in there that we're pretty excited about. So, And we'll uh, put a link down in the description if you want to check that out. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, let's dive right so, in. Yeah, let's do it. All right. All right. So this week, uh, before we get kick started, I just want to give a shout out to Jeremiah and I's doppelgangers. I I'm in kind of my uh, warm overcoat jacket here and jeremiah we got our backwards hat and it just reminded me of these two guys you know <laughs> <laughs> pull pull jeremiah up there opa let's <laughs> i got the beard and the backwards hat and the the jacket and jeremiah's got his uh long hair and you know oh anyway sorry about that that's a throwback to some old stoner movies i used to watch <laughs> um anyways uh let's get into today's uh, news presentation we have uh the fact that i identify as a conspiracy realist and my pronouns are they lied <laughs> um <laughs> and as we've been doing the news uh, over the past uh you know couple months the more and more you can start to see the deceptions that are being pushed by the media it's not so much bold face lying but it's kind of skewing the truth uh to convince you of their perspective um, yep. So, I mean, this could have been us, but you still insist on living in fear. And <laughs> and that's really what a lot of this uh, kind of news cycle has been about, especially with Ukraine and Russia and the whole fear of World War III. And we're not trying to pronounce a message of peace and safety if that's on the doorstep. But the fact is that fear has been used to control people uh, for time and more immemorial. So... Um, we're going to get into some interesting uh, articles t 
today. The first video I wanted to show is, of course, the big news uh, ticket item right now is that Trump just announced he's running for 2024 presidential election. And uh, big surprise there, right? Wink, wink. <laughs> so uh, you want to go ahead and play that first video? I, I found uh, some moments from his speech very interesting. Let's check this out. We will wage war upon the cartels and stop the fentanyl and deadly drugs from killing 200,000 Americans per year. And I will ask Congress for legislation ensuring that drug dealers and human traffickers, these are terrible, terrible, horrible people who are responsible for death, carnage, and crime all over our country. Every drug dealer, during his or her life on average, will kill 500 people with the drugs they sell, not to mention the destruction of families. But we're going to be asking everyone who sells drugs, gets caught selling drugs, to receive the death penalty for their heinous acts. Are there any funeral parlors around here? Now's the best time to set one up. I'll supply the dead bodies. Criminals only understand force. If you just talk to them, they don't listen. You know, there is no crime at all. When you threaten criminals with death, in my country at least, there is no law which says I cannot threaten criminals. If we do not interdict this problem, the next generation will be having a serious problem. You destroy my country, I'll kill you. And it's a legitimate uh, thing. If you destroy our young children, I will kill you. That is a very <laughs> correct statement. I will All right, kill you. So, <laughs> yeah, I love that comparison with the Duterte. And this is close to heart here because I grew up in the Philippines, as you know, Jeremiah. And uh, President Duterte... Uh, was a very popular president. He just recently left office, uh, but he was having <laughs> drug dealers murdered in the street pretty much. It seems like Trump took some notes from his hard-handed mannerism of treating uh, the whole drug issue and, and really overdosing, and, and that's a serious problem. And so uh, perhaps that's a, a, you know, a really good thing for Trump to come you know, starting his campaign off saying that they plan to institute the death penalty for drug dealers. But, um, you know, it, it's uh, something that I wanted to address was what about the corporate drug dealers? You know what I'm saying? How about yep. the death penalty for the, the hundreds and thousands of lives that they've affected, right? Absolutely. So, um, <laughs> Maybe he'll hold to... them accountable. Exactly. Not to get too draconian here myself, like Duterte, but let let's see what Trump does. Um, you know, as he starts to get on the campaign circuit, he's going to make some interesting comments, as he did probably, uh, as he did last time he was campaigning. But um, uh, he, he's kind of uh, you know, it's it's really interesting to see uh, the things that comes out of Trump's mouth because he he tends to. Uh, be unashamedly just provocative in his stances and his thoughts. And that's and, one of the uh, reasons why I love him. Yeah. It's always All good right, to get a rise, so... rise out of somebody. <laughs> get, get, get a rise out of somebody while at the same time leaking the, the deep, dark secrets of the the the, the elite, right? Dr draining the, the swamp. He, mentioned there, he wasn't only mentioning drug dealers. He was also mentioning traffickers and we we know with guys like epstein and and the involvement of many millionaires and billionaires with that whole uh black market selling and trafficking of humans uh those people need to be brought to justice as well mm -hmm. so he did mention that in the speech so that's a good thing yeah so let's uh let's i'm gonna go ahead and share this video um uh, opa can't share it with the audio but i can uh just play it for you guys um check this out uh this is how this is how you use food as a weapon when you sell real weapons you control armies 
when you control food, you control society. And this is going to go into some of our stories today, but this is a lady demonstrating, you know, but when you control seed, you control life on earth. And showing a lot of good resources and homesteading tools. Really an, ins an inspiring video that I wanted to show you guys, which is why I'm screen sharing it right now. But it's so true. Food is a weapon. And whether that means you are taking food from somebody, that is an act of war in a way. And so um, I mean, that's how siege warfare was fought, is they would just cut off the the day's supply of food and people would surrender because you can't fight if you're starved. And um, that yep. goes into uh, another video. It's listen to the farmer and some things on my radar for coming food shortages and uh, kind of the plot against mankind. Let's watch this video. Hello, it's me again. I'm sorry to be having to do this. I'm sure you're fed up with seeing my face and my eggs, but I've just got to get it out there. So the mainstream media can't seem to wrap around their head around the fact that it's the supermarket's fault for this egg shortage, not avian flu. So yes, my costs have increased. Yeah, feed has increased, electricity has increased. But the supermarkets aren't paying us at fair price to cover the costs. They've raised the price for you, the consumer, so you're already paying more for your eggs. They've raised the price by a minimum of 45 pence, but that hasn't come down to us, the farmers, so we're still getting paid the same. And I don't understand, the media can't seem to get their head around it. They're like, oh yeah, bird flu. It's a load of cobblers, yeah? Bird flu has not killed as many birds as we haven't ordered. Producers aren't ordering birds to go into laying flocks because we can't afford to. That's the problem. If the supermarkets, instead of upping the price for you and leaving our, our price the same, if they up the price for you, which they already have done, and gave us some of that price, then we wouldn't be making a loss producing eggs and the shelves would still be full. There was bird flu last year and there wasn't an egg shortage. It's 100% the supermarket's fault. I've done an interview with BBC and ITV and they've completely glazed over that. They cut me into snippets saying my, the cost of production has increased. They've made a, BBC and ITV have made an absolute mockery of farmers and it's disgusting. It's an absolute joke. It's, it's horrendous. This is 100% the supermarket's fault. All they need to do is pay producers a pay fair price for their eggs and the shelves would be full. It's scandalous. So, of course, there are some fabricated shortages, um, and this is a serious topic. I mean, check this out. Pretty wild that just 100 years ago, food was actually food, and people didn't have to meticulously dissect ingredient labels to look for things that are going to give them cancer. Everything should be a health food, not just 0.1% of grocery stores. And yet, even the food that um, is unhealthy is going on shortage. Um, but not to mention the organic uh, kind of off the farm type things. There's a war being fought against America's farmers right now. Uh, you can see here, uh, Bill Gates is being called out by a farmer for secretly buying up U.S. farmland. The farmer says, I don't want him to control a single acre. Mm -hmm. You know, what's the agenda being pushed through as these big corporate types buy out farmland all across the U.S. Uh, as we as we see food shortages through uh, natural famine and drought. We see food shortages from these factories being burned down all across the U.S. Um, it's almost a manufactured famine. Yep. And uh, in, in some less depressing news, here's a guy that got caught for actually doing something commendable. Uh, a water superintendent for Richmond, Vermont, resigned this week after admitting that he had been lowering the fluoride levels in the town's water below state guidelines for more than a decade. <laughs> and, uh, you know, k kudos to this guy. Um, you know, somebody who was actually trying to not turn his population docile. So what's significant about this is we know that fluoride here in the West is used, uh, you know, supposedly to protect our teeth from cavities. And yet we see the historical use of fluoride was in the internment camps during Nazi Germany to keep uh, 
prisoners of war and refugees who were, you know, internment camps and, you know, concentration camps to keep them from rising up. And, and it was shown that whenever fluoride was put into the water of these concentration camps, the number of guards was drastically reduced because the people turned docile when the fluoride was in their water. So, um, interesting things like this guy, you know, who seemed to be on the same page being like, we don't need all this fluoride in our water. Why am I dumping it into our water supply? <laughs> so mm -hmm. now I guess he's been outed for doing something that I think is commendable. Yeah. And uh, let's go ahead and check out this next video. And it's um, a, a PSA to take off fingerprint or facial recognition from your cell phone uh, as an act of preserving your privacy. Uh, check this video out. Messy military lawyer with a public service announcement. Does it matter who you are? Does it matter if you ever think you'll be investigated or ever be accused or suspected of an offense? If you have a cell phone and you want to demonstrate that you have a privacy interest in whatever is on your phone, whatever is on your phone, whether it's your search history, whether it's your photos, whether it's any messages you've ever sent, in order to make sure that you are keeping your phone secure, right now, you need to take off any fingerprint capability, any facial recognition capability, anything out, eye scan, whatever else is out there with all the fanciness of the world. Take it off, take it off, take it off. The only way that you should be able to get into your phone is with a pin code that you have in your brain. If your phone is seized from you because someone determines that there's probable cause that there could be evidence of a crime on it, if there is a fingerprint, if there is an eye scan, if there is any kind of facial recognition, they don't need your pin code to get into it. All they have to do is put it on your face, put your thumb to it or whatever, and that's a lawful search. But you cannot be ordered to turn over your pin code. So stop whatever you're doing right now. I don't care if you don't think you'll ever be suspected. You just never know why take a chance. Remove facial recognition open capabilities, remove fingerprint, eye scan, anything else. All that you should have is your pin code that is in your brain that you cannot be made to give up. This is your public service announcement, Messy Military Lawyer. I thought that was kind of interesting. Just good information. If you're a Julian Assange type, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Always keep you know, your information gotta keep private. Those documents secret. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's another video uh, that goes right along with what we were uh, looking at with the attack on farmers, attack on uh, local grow. Uh, let's check this video out, which is the right to repair. That movement is right to repair. You might have heard of this movement, but I've uncovered some crazy new details because the current movement might be centered around John Deere tractors. But it's not just an issue for farmers. It's a matter of national security. More on that in a minute. For decades, John Deere has been the main supplier of agricultural equipment for many farmers. And for much of that time, tractors were mechanical. This was great for farmers. Most grew up learning how to fix mechanical problems. And that's why you'll hear right to repair referred to as farmer's birthright. But John Deere is getting in the way of that. You see, in the last few years, farming equipment has become less mechanical and more electrical. It sounds strange, but it's true. Tractors today are run by computers. This has reinvented the way America farms. Some U.S. farms have seen a crop yield increase of up to 40%. That's amazing life-sustaining growth. But there's a dark side to this computerization. John Deere has locked farmers out of their software. How is this possible? John Deere copyrights their software and keeps the codes to themselves. And if anything goes wrong, only a licensed repairman from Deere can fix it. Farmers no longer have the right to repair their own equipment. And this is causing huge problems. Since farming is an industry of tight margins and exact timing, any delay or cost could be detrimental. For example, if a tractor stops working on a Friday and a John Deere repairman can't come fix it until Monday, an entire 
entire weekend of labor or harvesting is lost. A delay like that could cost thousands of dollars in produce, but that's not the only cost. The repair itself would be very pricey. These are costs that most farmers simply just can't afford. So they're left without a choice, lose money or hack into their own tractors. That's right. Many farmers have resorted to gray market software cracks in order to fix problems themselves. They can't afford to buy services for equipment that already cost them upwards of $800,000. You heard that right. Some tractors cost more than buying an actual home. If a farmer spends that much to own a tractor, should they have the right to fix it? That's the argument behind the current right to repair movement. Just this year, Deere has had 13 lawsuits brought against them. Agriculture workers say that Deere's monopoly over repairs violates antitrust laws, but that's not even as dark as it gets. Deere has made it so they can shut down remotely if farmers try to repair something themselves or don't pay a lease on time. Not only is this a huge invasion, it's also a vulnerability because this function makes tractors susceptible to cyber attacks. Foreign hackers could potentially shut down a bunch of tractors at once. It's not hard to see how this could be disastrous for the entire country. Farmers say this is why it's more important than ever to get back their right to repair. Do you agree? We are AO's The Decentralized Streaming All Service. Right. Let us know your thoughts. Wow. So uh, very interesting. Just another angle that they're shutting down uh, people's ability to produce food on their yep. own without having to trust in these big conglomerates. Absolutely. Some scary stuff. All right. So uh, in a kind of a pivot, uh, let's go ahead and check out a video that makes me like Kyrie Irving, the basketball player, <laughs> even more uh, as uh, he is being grilled for uh, posting about a documentary. Um, but, you know, I, I've noticed throughout the years, Kyrie is uh, kind of an outlier in terms of mainstream public figures because he always seems to have this uh, thread of truth through many of his comments. Even though he's just a basketball player, people want to know what these people think. And so I, I found this video very telling. He says some very significant things in response to the media. Let's check out this video from Kyrie Irving. And it's a title given to Christ, Philippians 2.11. And my name translates in the Hebrew language as Yahweh. So I went on the Amazon Prime. I was like, you know what, let me see if there are any documentaries on Yahweh. So went in the search bar, typed in Yahweh. That came up. Went out and shared it on my platform. That was my night. In terms of the backlash or what people call it, uh, we're in 2022. History is not supposed to be hidden from anybody. And I'm not a divisive person when it comes to religion. I, I embrace all walks of life. You see it on all my platforms. I talk to all races, all cultures, all religions. And my response would be, um, it's not about educating yourself on what Semitism is and what anti-Semitism is. It's really about learning the root words of where these come from and understanding that this is an African heritage that is also belonging to the people. Africa is in it, whether we want to dismiss it or not. So the claims of anti-Semitism and who are the original chosen people of God, and we go into these religious conversations and it's a big no-no. I don't live my way like that. I don't live my life that way. Excuse me, I grew up in a melting pot, and I say a melting pot of all races, white, black, red, yellow, Jewish, Christian, Muslim, and you can see the way I live my life now. I'm not here to be divisive, so. They could push their agenda. I don't want to say they, because I'm not identifying any one group or race of people, but I'm in a unique position to have a level of influence on my community. And what I post does not mean that I support everything that's being said or everything that's being done or I'm campaigning for anything. All I do is post things for my people in my community and those that it's actually going to impact. Anybody else that has criticism and obviously wasn't meant for them. Hopefully I'm understanding what you said and I, I want to make sure I get it right because I don't want to misquote I don't any expect, part of it. I don't expect understanding from a media conglomerate group that sincerely talks about the Tell game of basketball Kyrie. and then we bring up religion as if it's correlative at times when it's convenient for people to bring They're it trying up. trying to pin him down so please just as anti be direct with your question mm -hmm. so we can move on from this and I can talk about the game and go home to my son Elohim and my wife Marlene, okay? I might take it that this was the, what you shared was not something that you've even watched. This was you did okay. You did watch it, or either watch it or read. I had a lot of time last year to read a lot, read a whole bunch. 
good and bad about the truth of our world. So then do you, I guess, understand or not understand those that might imply that that work had anti-Semitic leanings in it? Right. I only ask this because the tweet is still up there. So I We're in 2022. It's on Amazon, a public platform. Whether you want to go watch it or not is up to you. There's things being posted every day. I am no different than the next human being, so don't treat me any different. You guys come in here and make up this powerful influence I have over top of the adultery of oh, you. You cannot post that. Why not? Why not? I don't hear an uproar on that. I'm not here to be divisive on what's going on on this or that. I'm not comparing Jews to blacks. I'm not comparing white to black. I'm not doing that. That conversation is dismissive and it constantly revolves around the rhetoric of who are the chosen people of God. And I'm not here to argue over a person or a culture or religion on what they believe. No, nah, this is what is here. It's on a public platform. Did I do anything illegal? Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Did I do anything illegal? Did I hurt anybody? Did I harm anybody? Am I going out and saying that I hate one specific group of people? So out of all the judgment that people got from me posting, I, I just, without talking to me, and then I respect what Joe said, but there has a lot to do with the not ego or pride of how proud I am to be an African heritage, but also to be living as a free black man here in America, knowing the historical complexities for me to get here. So. I'm not gonna stand down on anything that I believe in. I'm only gonna get stronger because I'm not alone. I have a whole army around me. Okay, Reed, while we're on the topic of promotion, why did you decide to promote something that Alex Jones said? That was a few weeks ago. I this did not is really stand interesting. Let's Jones. know what he says about Alex Jones. Position, narrative, court case that he had with Sandy Hook or any of the kids that felt like they had to relive trauma or parents that had to relive trauma, or to be dismissive to all the lives that were lost during that uh, tragic event. My, my post was a post from Alex Jones that he did in the early 90s or late 90s about secret societies in America of occults, and it's true. So I wasn't it's identifying true. with anything of being a campaigning, a campaigner for Alex Jones Alex or anything. Jones just there to post. And, and it's funny. Cults, and it's true. And it's actually hilarious because out of all yep. the things I posted that day, that was the one post that everyone chose to chose to see. It just goes back to the way our world is and works. I'm not here to complain about it. I just exist. And to follow up on the promotion of the movie and the book. Can you please stop calling it a promotion? What am I promoting? Put it out on your platform. But I'm promoting it? Do you see me doing, do you see By me in front of the, it out there, the people title? People are going to say that you are Yeah, I put promoting. it out there just like you put things out there, right? Yeah, but I, okay. I, it's not You put stuff. things out there for a living, right? Right, but my Great. stuff is Great. not so let's move on. filled let's with anti-Semitic stuff. Let's move on. Don't dehumanize me up here. I, I'm, not, I'm not doing I'm that. Another You're human free being. to post I can what, post whatever I want, so say what, that and shut it down and move on to the next question. But Kyrie, you have to understand that by I don't have post, to understand anything from you. But, but it's not me. Nothing. By it's no people that you're making you up, bro. Move on. But by posting move what on. you Move on. Next question. Anybody's question. Do you guys have any more questions it, from And they're going to say, you guys have any more questions? Because this is going to be a beliefs. clip. This is going to be a clip that he's going to marvel at. Is this any more questions? But you're not answering the question. Oh, this, this is another answering your question. Oh my God. Let's make another Instagram clip so we could be famous again. Next question. Kyrie, basketball related. All right. <laughs> Man, you could see how much they are coming after him, trying to pin him in a corner. Uh, but just gaining more and more respect for Kyrie Irving. Uh, yeah. Just some of his comments were very significant. Uh, I mean, he wasn't backing up Alex Jones and his kind of notorious personality and all the lawsuit allegations with Sandy Hook, but rather he was like, hey, that doesn't discredit some of the information Alex Jones shared back in the day about these secret societies and these, these occults, like the Bohemian Grove uh, and and – the, the people that go there that are all in the upper echelons of our government and military that go and dress up in dresses and burn fake babies in a fire, you know, to a Molac yeah. statue. Um, or, or the fact that he's uh, sharing documentaries uh, that talk about the true identity of Hebrews, right? Which, you know, I, don't, I can't vouch for the documentary he shared. I didn't see it, but my own personal convictions regarding the Ephraim awakening and and the truth that 
if you choose to keep Torah and you're grafted in through the Messiah, then that is the people of the book. And, uh, and there's a certain argument for blood ethnicity kind of relations. But the truth is, is that uh, today there can be flaming sodomites that claim to be, uh, you know, Hebrews. Uh, mm. But that they're no more the people of the book than somebody who is in the backwoods of Kentucky doing their best to keep the commandments, right? So um, we have to break down what does it actually mean to be the people of the book? Because if you're rebellious from the Most High, if you're living a life of sin, you can't claim to be his people. He had some really good points. I'm really interested in, in kind of the path that he's going down. You know, he's famous for being, you know, the flat earth, basketball player i wonder if he's ever seen uh, you know some of rob's videos jeremiah yeah i wonder i mean there, there are a lot of big name people that uh have actually known like got to know my dad personally which is pretty crazy that i don't know if i'm allowed to dis disclose who exactly but it was pretty cool to see some people that i looked up to being a musician and the people that looked up to Rob, you know? Yeah. It's pretty cool. All right. Um, so on to our next story here. Uh, I want to share this really interesting video of water being changed by sound, vibration, and frequency. And if you keep in mind that mankind, humans, are like, what, 70% water or something? And just the frequencies that we're surrounding ourselves with, whether it's our cell phones, our technology, whether it's the electric car that I'm sitting on top of, you know, uh, it, it's just really fascinating to me um, to set up the next video that we're going to watch, which is all about uh, frequencies and kind of people being able to spy on you and whatnot with this new era of technology. Um, what's happening to our bodies when these frequencies pass through us. So let's check out this video showing a drop of water oscillating in an acoustic harmonic field. All right. I thought that was really interesting. And yeah, uh, cool. keep in mind what we we're seeing here with the water and how frequency and vibration was changing it. Um, and now let's watch this next video on RFID chips. Radio waves can travel through walls. They can travel through wood. They can travel through the things we normally rely on to protect our privacy. Uh, for example, your purse, your backpack, your pocket, anything you're wearing or carrying. Kraft Philadelphia cream cheese has been tagged with RFID and sold to consumers, as have uh, Mach 3 razor products and other Gillette razor products, without the knowledge of the consumer. One of the tiny chips could actually even be the, the, the dot on the letter I on the back of the fine print on a package that you purchase. They were talking about having reader devices in every airport, on every bus, on every train, on every port, on every dock. One of the most worrisome applications of RFID are proposals to put them into cash, meaning that you would be able to track every banknote, where it had been, who it had been issued to, and create, in essence, an audit trail. That would, that would um, essentially take away the anonymity of cash that we now enjoy today. The ATM machine itself, as the money was, came through the, the roller device, would be, would be reading each number. And they would know who you are because, of course, you identify yourself at the bank before you take money out. And down the road, when you go to pay um, at a major retailer, it would also be possible for them, as they're putting the money into the cash drawer, to simply feed it through a little reader device. It would go in, it would uh, tag that number and transfer possession from Aaron Russo, say, to Walmart. Once everything you do is tied down to a single number and there is no longer the ability to pay with cash, then all it takes to render you a non-citizen is to simply turn that chip off.
you will no longer be able to really participate in any function in society. It goes with some of the things we've been discussing in previous weeks with digital currency. Uh, that goes right into uh, one of the next stories I wanted to talk about, which is banking giants and New York Fed start a 12-week digital dollar pilot. Uh, hmm. So it says here, global banking giants are starting a 12-week digital dollar pilot with the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Participants announced on Tuesday. So uh, the significance of this is the pilot tests how banks using digital dollar tokens and a common database can help speed up payments. Um, so we are on the cusp of a uh, digital currency, a, a blockchain technology that is controlled by big banks, which is, of course, terrifying because of you know the concept of what we just watched in the video on uh, the ability for them to turn the tap off Mm -hmm. and control you in that way but uh this moves on uh so let's move on to another interesting uh post here <clears throat> we have this story here with twitter impersonation causing eli Lilly's stock to plunge and red points funding boost uh rolex enters the metaverse uh, news digest. Okay, so the, the story here is a Twitter impersonation caused the e Eli Lilly stock to plunge, um, which was uh, just something that goes along with uh, some recent rules that have been passed on Twitter recently by Elon Musk. We covered it last week, um, how you can no longer impersonate somebody or risk being completely banned and suspended from Twitter. Uh, here's a something funny um apparently javascript has been banned from twitter for impersonating a real programming language <laughs> <laughs> so the, the javascript account was banned or suspended um and so just like uh regarding the story i just covered the eli Lilly stock uh it, it cost some hero eight dollars to get the verified twitter check mark and that then they were able to evaporate billions in Eli Lilly's stock value by impersonating the account and uh, saying kind of incendiary comments and whatnot. Um, and Elon accidentally created one of the most cost-effective anti-capitalist tools in history uh, by people <laughs> being able to jump on Twitter and for a short period of time act like these uh, verified big corporate accounts. Um, so it's just very telling with how... Uh, online identity is transforming in this current age. I mean, it's something that even Elon himself used for his own monetary benefit. Like he'll make a, a comment or a tweet about, you know, a cryptocurrency like Dogecoin or whatever, and he'll go through the moon. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so the public forum and the power of Twitter is found within this premise that, uh, interactions online can drive people's buying and selling sentiments. So uh, just a, a little interesting story I wanted to cover. Here's another one that uh, should catch our attention. We have here, did the U.S. plot to assassinate Julian Assange? A judge wants answers from, Mark, from Mike Pompeo. So Judge Santiago Pedraz of Spain's National Court sends a request to U.S. authorities to call the former Secretary of State as a witness. Uh, I don't know if this will go anywhere, um, but the headline definitely caught my attention um, because Julian Assange and WikiLeaks uh, definitely caused a headache uh, for the United States and certain closed interest groups. In terms of uh, kind of despairing news, <laughs> we have uh, a missile recently landed in Poland from Russia and uh, the West plots response to Poland bomb the West plots response to Poland bombing world leaders gather after Warsaw confirms Russian made missile DID caused blast in a Polish village that killed two and raises fear of worst conflict in Europe since World War II the explosion hit uh, Preswado a rural village located five miles from the Ukrainian border. Hey, it was five miles. Come on, guys, give them a break. Oh, wait, Poland's a member of NATO, so that's a big problem. 
On Tuesday afternoon, Poland's foreign ministry confirmed Tuesday night a Russian-made missile was responsible for blasts. The incident came as Moscow launched a barrage of fresh missile attacks across the whole of Ukraine. Poland is a member of NATO, and whenever a member state agreed to maintain a policy of collective defense, which is why this is a big news article for us, um, U.S. President Biden, meanwhile, convened an emergency meeting of the G20 leaders at summit in Indonesia. So if an attack happens on a NATO member, equal response and defensive measures are called on by the other members. So uh, this is why this should be on our radar. Of course, we've been talking World War III talk for months now. Um, but this is the kind of stuff that heats things up. So let's just be aware of it. Um, here's something interesting um, from the freethoughtproject.com. Pfizer and Moderna to investigate their own you-know-what for, <laughs> for myocarditis risks, which is very interesting. Why is Big Pharma investigating their own you-know-what for side effects if it was already supposedly tested and proven safe and effective? Oh my goodness, guys. This is just keeps getting better and better. Um, you know, keep this in mind. You probably didn't hear about this on the news that there was a 4,000% increase in VAERS virus miscarriage reports from 2019 to 2021. Now, this is the uh, adverse reaction reporting mechanism. There was apparently a 32,000% increase in virus menstrual disorders from 2019 to 2021. And there was a 123 increase in newborn deaths in September last year in Scotland. So what is going on? Well, could it have to do with some of these uh, adverse effects from this particular medical experiment? Hmm. Now, this is something interesting. Before the year 2020, the average you know what, was tested and retested by pharmaceutical companies for 10 to 15 years before it, be could, before it could be released to the public. This was done uh, through a complex process and a lot of red tape. If you read any medical journals or scientific outlines on development published before 2020, they all agree that long-term testing is necessary for public safety, but not when you're implementing a brand new experiment on mankind and it's being funded by the government. Oh, man. So uh, just something I wanted you guys to be aware of, Some, an interesting article. Um, now, of course, we've talked about the banking giants and the New York Fed starting a digital dollar. Uh, did you know that recently Pelosi announced that she's going to step down from U.S. House leadership but remain in Congress? Now, this lady who Thank God. tore up the, uh, the, the statements from Trump is – uh, during the State of the Union address, in a way prophetically signaling how the country would be torn apart through all, our, all of our disagreements, uh, she's now going to step down from the big chair. Um, so uh, she's the first woman to hold that influential post as being the Speaker of the House. And uh, she will step down as Democratic leader in the chamber a day after Republicans secured a narrow majority following the midterm elections. Um, very interesting. This leads me to uh, this uh, interesting voter color map. Uh, so here's a post. It says, another U.S. election, another land doesn't vote. People do. Style map to show the election results. So here's the counties that vote Republican in the red and, of course, the counties that vote Democrat in the blue. But check out the actual population center disparity in this comparative map. So you can see from this map kind of like how the population centers lean uh, and the, each bubble represents um, a number of people and the larger bubbles represents larger number of people. And you can see that there's these hyper liberal conservatives uh, in these hotspots throughout the country. And yet because the conservative vote is so spread uh, across the U.S., that's why this map on the left looks so red. Um, but, oh, man, you can tell they're starting to move down there in Texas, know, Jeremiah. They, you better get ready. I was about ready. to say, they, they better not. Don't, don't California my Texas. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so uh, some articles that actually OPA shared that I want to 
go through is apparently Artemis 1 launches the U.S. long-awaited return to the moon. And the first flight test of the world's most powerful rocket will send an unscrewed spacecraft to lunar orbit and back. How interesting. It's just so crazy that they've not been back to the moon in like 50 years. Oh, man. They have a lot so, better CGI uh, now, though. They do. <laughs> you know, it, it's not that I'm, I'm a rocket denier. It's just sometimes I'm so skeptical when all the millions and billions of dollars that are spent on the space programs could be spent exploring and investigating and developing our world here. Let's find out what's down in the bottom of the oceans yeah. when only like, you know, 10% of the oceans have been explored and, and yet we're sending space rockets up to the nothingness, right? It's mm -hmm. just ridiculous. Um, that's my personal scientific endeavor to get that <laughs> money rerouted into uh, sea exploration, diving into the great deep, right? Yeah, sounds like a hit show. On Discovery. Discovery Plus. <laughs> Here's uh, our final article for today. Is now there are apparently 8 billion people on Earth, according to the UN report. You know, I'm always curious, how do they come up with this exact number, right? People around the world are living longer and having fewer children. Those are just a few of the trends the United Nations described in a report. So this statement here is really interesting living longer and having fewer children um if if y'all will recall back to the very first commandment given in the scriptures be fruitful and multiply uh people are not following along those footsteps anymore of the previous generations most people are having one maybe two children uh causing at least the the west and our population kind of replacement used to plummet um and the average life expectancy is projected to rise from 72 in 2019 to 77 in 2050. And the rate of growth will continue to slow down across the world, according to the report. Um, they say we reached 7 billion in 2011, and uh, it predicts it will not reach 9 billion for another 15 years. Um, but it's very interesting. Like, where do they get these numbers? How do, They're not polling all of the earth. They don't, I mean how plugged in are these uh, kind of censuses? Um, but this de deceleration growth in population explained by a number of factors, including more readily available birth control, better ed education, and some countries have birth rates so low, the UN predicts they will not be able to maintain their populations. So this is a, you know, a significant phrase here that we need to be aware of. Goldstone says that despite finite resources and climate change, the world could still manage with a population of 9 or even 10 billion as long as it's paying attention to what people are doing, how they live, and which specific areas of groups are growing the fastest. Uh, so, anyways, thank you, Opa, for sharing those stories. And I think that concludes most of our articles today. Awesome. Uh, thank you for sharing. I think it's uh, it's time for an all new Opus Corner. So take it away, Opa. My hut, der hat drei Ecken. Drei Ecken hat mein hut. Und hat er nicht drei Ecken, dann ist es nicht mein hut. It's time for Opus Corner. As a butcher is shooing away a dog from his shop, he sees a $10 bill and a note in his mouth reading, Five lamb chops, please. Amazed, he takes the money and puts a bag of chops in the dog's mouth and quickly closes the shop. He follows the dog and watches him wait for a green light, look both ways, and trot across the road to a bus stop. The dog checks the timetable and sits on the bench. When the bus arrives, he walks around to the front and looks at the number, then boards the bus. The butcher follows, dumbstruck. As the bus travels out into the suburbs, the dog takes in the scenery. 
After a while, he stands on his back paws to push the stop bell. Then the butcher follows him off. The dog runs up to a house and drops his bag on the step. He goes back down the path and takes a big run and throws himself, whap, against the door. He does this again and again. No answer. So he jumps on a wall, walks around the garden, beats his head against a window, jumps off, and waits at the front door. A big guy opens it and starts cursing and shouting at the dog. The butcher runs up and screams at the guy, What are you doing? This dog is a genius! The owner responds, Genius! My foot! This is the second time this week he's forgotten his keys! <laughs> a local bar was so sure that its bartender was the strongest man around that they offered a standing $1,000 bet. The bartender would squeeze a lemon until all the juice ran into a glass and hand the lemon to a patron. Anyone who could squeeze one more drop of juice out would win the money. Many people had tried over time, weightlifters, longshoremen, etc., but nobody could do it. One day, this scrawny little man came to the bar wearing thick glasses and a polyester suit and said in a tiny, squeaky voice, I'd like to try that, Beck. After the laughter had died down, the bartender said, Okay, and grabbed a lemon and squeezed away. Then he handed the wrinkled remains of the rind to the little man. But... The crowd's laughter turned to total silence as the man clenched his fist around the lemon and six drops fell into the glass. As the crowd cheered, the bartender paid the $1,000 and asked the little man, What do you do for a living? Are you a lumberjack? A weightlifter? What? The man replied, I work for the IRS. <laughs> and now for the funnies. <laughs> and now the weather. Well, doggone it. But I'm afraid that cold front I told you about yesterday is just barely going to miss us. <laughs> Pumpkin pie. Hey, I weigh exactly 3.14 pounds. <laughs> Mathematician food fights. Michelangelo's father. Watch those flesh tones, son. They're too yellow. How much are they paying you for this? Back in my day, we finished the ceiling twice as big in less than a week. Of course, in those days, we had to make our own brushes. <laughs> Grandpa's computer repair. 50 cents. <laughs> I'm all shook up. <laughs> That's messed up. <laughs> Unwittingly, Ben Franklin also discovers static electricity. Practical jokes at Avengers Headquarters. Dang it, Thor! Dude, I never made it to this level before. I have no idea what to do. Go outside and play. <laughs> 
It's no use, Wanda. It's like they say, we just don't have lips. When you wish upon a star, field cricket. <laughs> Whoa! Watch where that thing lands. We'll probably need it. It's a fax from your dog, Mr. Dansworth. It looks like your cat. <laughs> Ernie's a chicken. Ernie's a chicken. <laughs> I just blow dried the cat. You just had to swipe at that fish. <laughs> Regular glue. Super glue. Crazy glue. <laughs> Corrective lenses. But I should have... Stop right there. It's should have. <laughs> I think I can get rid of those voices in your head. <laughs> no! Knowing how it could change the lives of canines everywhere, the dog scientists struggled diligently to understand the doorknob principle. Over here, over here, over here. Yes, yes, I know that, Sydney. Everybody knows that. But look, four wrongs squared minus two wrongs to the fourth power divided by this formula do make a right. <laughs> the huffing doesn't concern me so much, but the puffing, well... That's got me alarmed. <laughs> well, I always wanted to live in a gated community. <laughs> yes, I get it. And I find it offensive. <laughs> and that concludes Opa's Corner. Opa's Corner is now available on my own YouTube channel. Like, share, and subscribe. Opa, that was great as always. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, Opa. All right, it's time for history. So today for history, we're going to be exposing a man named Dan Schneider. This is a picture of him. If you're familiar with Nickelodeon or, you know, know somebody that has watched Nickelodeon, say, pre-2018, uh, you, you probably have seen a show that this guy's worked on. Uh, 
but he's best known for his his kid shows. So let's play this first clip and you kind of get an idea of who Dan Schneider is. We need to talk about Nickelodeon and what happened to Amanda Bynes, Jeanette McCurdy, Jamie Lynn Spears, and probably every other young starlet that went through Nickelodeon in the late 90s and early 2000s. Nobody talks about pedophilia. It's the big secret. And it's widespread? Oh yeah. I was surrounded by them when I was 14 years old. Surrounded. Literally. Didn't even know it. It wasn't until I was old enough to realize what they were and what they wanted and what they were about and the types of people that were surrounding me till I went, oh my God, they were everywhere like vultures. If you grew up watching Nickelodeon, then you may have heard of Dan Schneider. He was responsible for many of its hit shows during the 90s and 2000s, such as The Amanda Show, iCarly, and Drake and Josh. In recent years, Dan has been brought into controversy due to rumors about abusive and possibly sexual behaviors between him and his young female co-stars. None of these rumors were grounded with any hard evidence and most people dismissed it. Until March 26, 2018, when Nickelodeon announced that they will be parting ways with Dan Schneider. The news surprised many people. Why would Nickelodeon fire one of its biggest producers seemingly out of nowhere? Were they aware of all the rumors and decided to finally do something about it? What is the Dan Schneider conspiracy? The Dan Schneider conspiracy. The Dan Schneider conspiracy. One of the most prominent rumors regarding Dan Schneider is that he has a thing for feet and uses his shows and their following to satisfy this fetish. You may be thinking, well, maybe he just finds feet and toes to be funny. However, it's undeniable that there are a large number of feet related puns and barefoot scenes in his shows. Too many to list here. There are some weird examples, however. In Victorious, Tori hosts an online show called Tori Takes Requests, where viewers can ask her to do all sorts of random things. In the very first episode, Tori gets a request to have ketchup poured all over her feet, and then she does a little dance at the end. In another online show called Cat's Random Thoughts, there's a moment in the first episode where she sticks her big toe in her mouth. I didn't really watch Victorious growing up, so I don't know if these played on television, but I do know that they were extras on Slab.com, a fictional in-universe website. Now, here is where things get even more unusual. On September 13th, 2013, the Sam and Cat Twitter page asked its followers to take a picture of their feet with the hashtag Sam and Cat Saturday. And a number of people did. This is just one of many now infamous feet-related tweets from Dan Schneider and his shows. But this is the most well-known. You can find several if you look around long enough. During the same year, there was a post on Reddit about how Dan Schneider is the most successful writer slash TV executive in children's television for the last 30 years. A user commented, I grew up in LA and was an extra on The Amanda Show a few times. He, being Dan Schneider, paid me a hundred bucks once just to tickle my feet. The user further elaborated, To make a weird story short, in between takes, Dan asked me if I was ticklish, and I said no. Then he bet me $100, he could make me ticklish. I was expecting him to reach over and tickle me under my arm or something like that, but he led me to his office. I basically got paid to receive a foot massage and a lot of compliments. A small YouTube channel known as Revenge of the Sis have done a number of videos about Dan Schneider, and during one of their podcasts, they received a call from an anonymous source stating that she went to an audition for one of Dan Schneider's shows. I'll be playing a portion of what she had to say. So in 1997, I was discovered in a mall, um, and um, basically we would go on auditions just to different places, and eventually I got a manager and an agent um, who would send me on audition calls for, you know, mean, well, like little things like commercials and everything. And then uh, as I started growing in my career, in 2007, my agent um, contacted me and my family about um, possibly getting a good Nickelodeon gig. And we um, flew out to LA uh, for this audition. 
And when we got there, it was um, a bunch of kids, probably like 200 kids. Um, and then these random agents hand selected specific kids that they liked or, you know, showed some charisma. And then um, once about 40 kids were selected, we were then told um, to take off our shoes and that we were each going to go into a room to show the producer, who is Dan Schneider, um, the, the tapes to see who he would want on the show. And um, of course, you know, we always ask, like, oh, what do we have to do? Like, what would you like us to be doing once we're in there? And um, my agent told me, he, you know, he's like, it's going to be like a, He's like, you gotta just take off your shoes, just like run around in front of the camera, you know, talk about how much you love being barefoot. And at the time, even, you know, it was like, okay, that's weird, but I didn't think anything of it because I was still young. Right. My mom kind of looked around and was like, this is wrong. Um, there's just something really wrong about this. Because this person's mother decided to take her out of the audition, she's been blacklisted from the business so let's recap so march 2018 nickelodeon announced that they had parted ways with dan schneider he was later accused of misconduct and uh some of his former employees are the accusers which he you know completely denies so let's watch the second clip and you be the judge if if dan schneider is really innocent or guilty Hey, Dan Schneider, I know you're watching my Vine. Do you like my Vine? 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 Vine! Look what you've done to me. There are a number of photos circulating the internet of Dan Schneider being a bit too touchy with his young child actors, some of which are a bit more uncomfortable to look at than others. There are stories of him inviting young actresses into his office and hosting pool parties during auditions. So what would happen is that your parents would send you to sort of like this camp it was basic acting classes, and it was an opportunity for the kids to get discovered. And interestingly enough, most of the kids got discovered by the pool. There was a, they had a pool, they had like tennis courts, and I believe like it was like Megan Fox and um, other female celebrities, and Hilary Duff was another one mm -hmm. who got discovered there at the pool. And they would push you to that do cool activities because they said that's where you, you have the highest chance of getting discovered you now what was, the, what was the age range of, of the people that went to these uh, at these camps um, the age ranges the ones that I was familiar with are ages 13 to 22 in an article by Kira Davis from Red States she writes I happened to be chatting with a former child actor over a week ago we were discussing Weinstein and she told me that in her youth, she worked on one of Schneider's shows very briefly. She told me, my friend was molested by that man on set. Everyone knew it. No one said a word. In 2004, actor and producer Brian Peck was convicted of several accounts of lewd acts towards a minor and was sentenced to 16 months in prison. Court documents reveal that several of these acts involved attempted sodomy of a person under 16, sexual penetration by foreign object, and oral copulation by anesthesia or controlled substance, just to name a few. The victim has remained anonymous to protect his or her career, but according to reports, the child actor was involved in The Amanda Show. After serving a sentence, Peck was released from prison and went straight back to working on kids shows, such as The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. This is because although he is prohibited from direct contact with children, that technically doesn't mean he's not allowed to work on shows that involve children. I wonder why I'd wear this. Wear it to a fruit stand. You look like a lime. So what does this have to do with Dan Schneider? Well, in a 2002 article titled Room to be all that, it is revealed that Dan Schneider and Brian Peck would host comedy boot camps for Nickelodeon child stars, where they were allegedly separated from their parents. Really think about that for a bit. The guy that held boot camps for children was convicted and sentenced two years later for committing sexual acts with children and then went straight back to working on children's shows. When asked if he had anything to say to the child he abused, Peck responded with, I don't have any comment on it. I really don't. And this is the guy that Dan Schneider worked with for years. 
According to Deadline.com, Dan Schneider was known for having temper issues. During a meeting with Nickelodeon executives, Dan was told that his show Game Shakers would not be renewed for a fourth season, leaving it on a cliffhanger ending. It was also reported that Nickelodeon's newest show, Cousins for Life, would move into the same studio that all of Schneider's shows were exclusively produced for years, and that Dan wasn't so happy about having to share space now. Perhaps the most absurd allegation towards Dan Schneider is that he is the true father of Jamie Lynn Spears' daughter. Yeah, this is a little silly, but it does lead into something interesting, so I'm going to bring it up for educational purposes, just so you guys know. Jamie Lynn Spears, the star of Zoey 101, infamously got pregnant at 16 years old, which resulted in the cancellation of the show. Crazy Days and Nights is an online gossiping website ran by an anonymous blogger known as NT, a self-proclaimed dialed-in entertainment lawyer. Supposedly, NT was able to predict certain scandals involving big-name celebrities, such as Weinstein and Kevin Spacey, on his website years before mainstream media caught on. Obviously, there's no way to verify this is accurate, despite the Daily Beast believing so. Regardless, there was an interesting post made by NT in October of 2007, saying, I don't even know how you define what list someone is when they are on some ensemble show watched by teens and preteens. So go with the above and make her a female. Make her pregnant, which is causing the producers to have a heart attack because they really don't need any more scandals. But wait, there's more. One of the producers, who was old enough to be her grandfather, shouldn't be having a heart attack because of shock, because he is the one who knocked her up. New boyfriends are being lined up as we speak. In December of 2007, just two months later, Jamie Lynn Spears announces her pregnancy. Speaking of crazy days and nights, visitors to the website are able to create accounts and comment on Antti's posts, often attempting to guess which celebrity will be exposed next. One of these commenters, known as him, he had this to say about Dan Schneider. He's a monster, the worst predator alive. And if you wonder why nobody will confront or charge him, he's in charge of multiple hit shows for Nick, which rakes in oceans of money, tens of millions of dollars multiplied by many years in many shows, not to mention his merchandising royalties. So Viacom Nick warned him to cool it, then pay for his damn lawyers. What about the parents? No tweener parent who shoved their kid into the limelight from birth is going to cross him either, and risk career suicide and loss of revenue and residuals in future career. No matter how bad it f***s up the kids, especially if there's multiple kid actors in the family, and the kids' agents are complicit too, just ask the Spears family. A lot of settlements get paid out of Viacom's accounts. Finally, on March 26, 2018, Nickelodeon parted ways with Dan Schneider. Nickelodeon's official statement was, Following many conversations together about next directions and future opportunities, Nickelodeon and our longtime creative partner Dan Schneider slash Schneider's Bakery have agreed to not extend the current deal. Since several Schneider's Bakery projects are wrapping up, both sides have agreed that this is a natural time for Nickelodeon and Schneider's Bakery to pursue other opportunities and projects. Dan was given a payout of $7 million upon his departure. He and his wife sold their home and currently reside in Hidden Hills, California. It's unknown if Dan Schneider is working on any new projects. I mean, what a sick industry, because uh, it wasn't just Dan Schneider. It was like a whole group of people. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, it really shows you how people are groomed and how an environment for somebody to be abused is created by luring them with that, you know, fancy golden carrot of stardom and then saying, hey, if you want to be famous, you can get noticed by going out, you know, in your skimpy bathing clothing and jumping into the pool so that they can get a good gander at you, you know, mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever it is, just the whole thing is almost like, uh, like an eerie warning for, Hey, if you have fallen in love with the Hollywood lifestyle and you want your kids to participate, this is what you have to you know, be aware of because this it's like is a how weird it cult. happened. Yeah. Very culty, man. Well, so that's my Dan Schneider uh, history, but on a lighter note, I wanted to play some more, uh, or I wanted to play a funny, funny George Carlin clip, one of my favorite, so I hope you guys enjoyed. So I think it's time for some memes. Oh yeah. All right, well, meme me up. Meme me up. <laughs> So 
So uh, people in the 60s saying, I better not say that or the government will wiretap my house. <laughs> and people today, hey, wiretap, do you have a recipe for pancakes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is God creating ducks. Waterproof that chicken and give it a kazoo. <laughs> that is true. It does sound like a kazoo. Oh, Lately, God. Johnny Depp looks like that cool ant that bought you your first beer. He does. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That's awesome. Here's a picture of world leaders on their way to another climate conference. Yep. All of their thousands of gallons of fuel they spend just to chat about how they need to turn the screw down on us. How dare you? These uh, bears are looking out of the woods and they see some people in their sleeping bags and they go, Sandwiches! <laughs> <laughs> stealing my stuff. Opa's hey, stealing did you play? Stuff. Did you use this one, Opa? No, but it was going to come in a future episode <laughs> oh i jumped I, you know i guess this is not so much a meme as it is uh, one of those newspaper funnies so i'll let you have it you, you can represent it if you want you probably will do it better than me <laughs> here's a picture when life is falling apart but you're totally used to it now <laughs> there's that one clip of that guy swimming in his house in florida when the hurricane hit do you ever see that oh yeah I got to check that out. That sounds hilarious. Yeah. So Walmart will be closed on Thanksgiving so that self-checkout cashiers can be with their families. Yeah. It's hilarious because I remember when Walmart used to have a cashier and all of those different checkouts. And now it's like a ghost town. You can't find anybody to help you. There's like one person saying hi when you enter and that's the last person you see. <laughs> yeah ours is like they just have a bunch of blue carts because everybody's doing the online stuff now the walmart i actually have walmart plus and they can deliver to your house for free if you're a member so they're always pushing these things around so when i go to the grocery store it's very annoying because they like to stop right in front of you and all these robots are taking over self-checkout wow they're making us all do right. all the work well, uh, I'll leave off with a quick reminder that we dressed up as Jay and Silent Bob today for this episode, and uh, that's all I got. <laughs> all right, man. Well, uh, do you want to play that deep fake for everybody right before we end today's episode? Yeah, yeah. I saw that. Let's let's show everybody this latest deep fake. All right. You guys enjoyed that was uh oh man i cool think rob would have loved that i know that he really would have i wish i could have known about it before while he was still here but yeah he would have he would have loved all that being indiana jones and and uh rocky and he loved it's funny because his face fits perfectly on two of his favorite actors sylvester stallone and uh Harrison Ford 
and my face doesn't fit well on anybody. <laughs> Some people it does, I guess. Loki. Uh, it has trouble with my beards. I think putting my bearded face on a, a shaved face, it like freaks it out. It's like, what's going on here? There's too much face. <laughs> well, that's good for the facial recognition. Now they can uh, they can't uh, frame you for a, a crime or anything. So you can't you can't redo this this facial. <laughs> Oh man! All right, man. Oh, that's well, that... cool, man. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, man. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the current news, and open thank you for Opus Corner. And I hope you guys enjoyed episode twenty-three. And we'll see you in episode twenty-four. See ya. If you would like to submit a story, topic, or have any other inquiries, please email submit at skibanewsnation.com. Also, you can email Jeremiah Skiba personally at jeremiah at skibanewsnation.com. Also, email Jake personally at jake at skibanewsnation.com. If you want to write us a letter, send us something, help support us, or just say hi, please send your letter to Jeremiah Skiba, P.O. Box 560-271, The Colony, Texas 75056. If you write us a letter, I'll do my best to write you back. Hey Skiba News Nation family, thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. You can also help support this channel by getting yourself some Skiba News Nation merch. Also, we are proud to announce that we are now on Patreon, where you will get bonus content, shoutouts, and much more. Thank you again for watching and helping us stay on the quest for truth. Huge shout out to all our Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for your support. We couldn't do this show without you. If you want to help support us, go to patreon.com forward slash Skiba News Nation. We are also proud to announce that Skiba News Nation podcast is now available on podcast platforms. 